You're listening to Occult Symbolism and Pop Culture. I'm your host, Isaac Weishaupt. Today, we're going to talk about a guy named Ezra Miller. That's right. We're going to talk about the actor Ezra Miller. We're going to talk about, you know, this, this young man's been in a lot of trouble lately. But he seems to get off the hook. Why is that? What do you think that is? Well, we're going to talk about his connections to Satanism, the Process Church, which leads into conversations about Jesus Christ and the devil. We're going to talk about ritual magic and some occult ideas about gender for good measure. So, a lot to get into with this guy. Uh, as you know, I have a certain field of a focus of study, if you will, on the occult. So that's where we're going to leave it. I'm not going to tell you Oh, his movies, he's great at this, that, and the other. Don't know. Don't care. Not my thing. So who is he? Who is this guy? Or who is who who are they, I should say, right? He goes by the pronouns they them. You know, I heard a I heard a good example of I go back and forth on the pronoun thing. I'm okay. Like, I respect, you know, people's wishes. To be identified as whatever. I heard a good example of why we shouldn't be bugging out about people's pronouns. But then on the same hand, I also don't care, right? Like, where you put your genitals means nothing to me. Unless I'm trying to sleep with you, right? So, don't care. I don't care what you identify as. I just want to talk to you as a person. Some people get wrapped around the axles of this identity thing. And that's all fueling up the ego, right? And any form of enlightenment is about destruction of the ego and destructive of the uh, social norms, social boundaries, constructs. But this good argument I heard about why we shouldn't really focus and care that much about people's pronouns, the person said it's, it's like when someone says, Hey, uh, how you doing? My name is TJ. And then years later, you find out on their legal birth certificate, their real name is Thomas. And you're like, well, I've been calling you TG all these years. I didn't know your real name was Thomas. Do you care? Do you, do you get into it? Do you, do you, do you want to force them and say, no, you need to change your name to Thomas. That's what it says on your birth certificate. Do you call them out? Do you raise a fundamental flaw in their logic but that being said i do have a hard time wrapping my head around the concept of the they them stuff i think if you're part of this very small minority of people who view themselves as non-binary you also need to be considerate of other people and be considerate that most people have a hard time wrapping their heads around it and have a hard time remembering the pronoun so if everyone gives a little bit, we'll find the happy medium, right? Now, but overall, like, fine. I was, in fact, I spoke. I used to speak with an artist named Genesis P. Ulrich who wanted me to address them as a they. And I did so, right, on the emails. Sometimes I forgot. It wasn't a big deal. Genesis didn't make a big deal out of it. It's fine, you know? I, mo- I I bend a little bit. Genesis bends a little bit. But anyway, Ezra Miller, they, I'll probably forget and call him a, <laughs> there you go. I'll probably forget and call them a him at some point. It's fine. Who cares, right? Ezra Miller was in a show called The Flash or a movie about the superhero, right? The guy runs real fast. But more famously, he was also in Fantastic Beasts, a Harry Potter tale with Johnny Depp. And you know Johnny Depp takes us down all kinds of occult paths. I believe we did a full show focused on him, if I'm not mistaken. Ezra Miller was also in The Stand, the new series based on the Stephen King book. He played the character of the Trash Can Man. Which he did a great job, by the way. You know, he plays a crazy pyro, tech, pyro uh, maniac, you know. And I realize I am now actually talking about his 
works of art. I, sh- I said I wasn't going to, but there we are. But he came out back, I don't even know, 2017, and praised as a icon of the queer community and a non-binary king, they call him, right? And in 2018, GQ Style put him on the cover and wrote, Please, God, tell us the next generation of movie stars is going to be like this. All right. And, of course, he, I, look, I think they're just trolling. This is all part of the divide and conquer strategy. Everyone's trolling to keep us distracted. Meanwhile, there's higher level things going on. The media's in on it too, right? The media, the politicians, even the conspiracy people. We take the bait constantly and start getting wrapped around the axles about culture war, identity politics stuff. But Ezra Miller, he's been giving us strange symbols for many years. Back in 2019, he attended the Met Gala And he was wearing a mask and it had multiple eyes all over the face. Uh, I've been covering this stuff for a while, right? So we talked about it back then. And one time he dressed up as a white bird, which is a reference to the occult practice of alchemy. The alchemists go through a progression of colors on their path to the great work. Black, white, yellow, red. And in fact... He also did the same, he did a stance of the goat with the bobs. The Baphomet with the words Avra Cadavra written in triangular shapes on his palms. And this, of course, is a reference to the occult, to ritual magic. Specifically, Abra Cadabra, which was, you know, Aleister Crowley came up with that word. Right. He wrote that word in the book of the law, which is his basically foundational Bible type book for his religion of Thelema. He said it's the magical formula for the new age, the Aeon of Horus, he called it. And Abrahadabra signifies the completion of the great work. Now you're probably thinking, well, I've heard of Abracadabra. Is that the same thing? Yes, it is. Only Crowley put the H in there, changes it up uh, in, uh, what do you call it, Uh, numerology value. And the H represents Horus, as in the Aeon of Horus, the new age. Now, uh, Ezra Miller's also been doing lots of Mano Cornudo, magical hex hands, weird triangles of manifestation with uh, as above so below i put all these images on my instagram on the the art for the show long story short it seems he's into occult magic which i'm actually going to confirm later on when we get into this so okay actor been doing a bunch of occulty things whatever well back in march of 22 he was arrested in hawaii and he told the cops that he films himself getting assaulted as a form of art. <laughs> to make it worse, NFT, uh, crypto NFTs. To add another bruise on the eye of crypto bros everywhere. <laughs> but what had happened was he spat in someone's face. And uh, very Fight Club inspired, it seems. And what was weird was in his pocket, he had the ring from the Flash character. I'm going to read to you. Is this from Vanity Fair, I think? It's from Vanity Fair. Since 2020, the actor has been accused of crimes and abuses spanning 6,000 miles and two oceans, throwing a chair that hit a woman in the forehead, threatening a couple in their bedroom, and stealing their wallet and passport in Hawaii on top of the incident at Margarita Village, choking two strangers in Iceland and breaking into a neighbor's home in Vermont to steal alcohol, which resulted in a felony charge. In June, two protection orders were issued against Miller, 
The first was filed in tribal court in North Dakota by Chase Iron Eyes, a Native American businessman, and his wife, Sarah Jumping Eagle, on behalf of their 18-year-old Takata Iron Eyes, who goes by Gibson. They accused Miller of grooming, brainwashing, and emotionally abusing the teenager. A non-binary indigenous activist Miller met when Iron Eyes was just 12. And then there's a, uh, let's see, the second protective order that we can read a little bit more about. It says the second protective order was requested by a mother in Massachusetts claiming that Miller's interest in her own non-binary 12-year-old made her and the child uncomfortable in incidents between February and June of this year. The actor denies the allegations. So what's going on here? What's going on is he's allegedly grooming kids And the problem is Hollywood seems quite all right with this, which is not surprising because it seems like Hollywood's okay with grooming. Prove me wrong, (laughs) right? Um, See the whole Balenciaga scandal. Kim Kardashian tweeted, Oh, you know, I got to think about this whole thing. I'm a little disappointed, but ooh. And then nothing. And also, Ezra Miller was on a 95-acre farm where he was housing a woman and her three children. And the police was just loaded down with guns. And a friend called the police to get them out of there, but the women and the kids were gone. This dude's a mess, right? On August 15th, Ezra Miller said this. I now understand that I'm suffering complex mental health issues and and have begun ongoing treatment. I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior. I am committed to doing the necessary work to get back to a healthy, safe, and productive stage in my life. And then Vanity Fair was interviewing a whole bunch of people who knew Ezra Miller, and they say this. They say, the actor verbally and emotionally abused those around them and referred to themselves alternately as Jesus and the devil. Three people say Miller has also wrapped the superhero they play into their grandiose speechifying. Oh, I'm sorry. It's it's a, the pronouns that screw me up. Okay. Three people say Miller has also wrapped the superhero they play into their grandiose speechifying. The actor, says one source, was claiming that the Flash is the one who brings the multiverses together just like Jesus. Now, this is interesting. This is what piqued my attention. This is what made me want to do this whole show. He said, Ezra Miller says that they are Jesus and the devil. Those are the apparent non-binary personalities Ezra Miller believes they are. Now, this is interesting, right? Let's, Let's focus in on this for a second. Because the idea of Jesus and the devil being unified, this ties into some heavy-duty occult processes and even the end of the world. Eschatology, they call it. Which you're going to find out. It turns out Ezra Miller is trying to bring about the end of the world. Illuminate, confirm. All day, right? You got to go back to the 1960s. And some Scientologists... They split off, and they started what's called the Process Church of the Final Judgment. And their beliefs include the idea that Christ, Lucifer, Satan, and Jehovah are the four great gods of the universe. Now, supposedly, Charles Manson was involved with the Process Church because they actually interviewed him while he was in prison, And Manson allegedly claimed to even be part of this church. Which led to a guy named Ed Sanders publishing a book called The Family. Where he talks about it. And Ed Sanders got sued and had to remove parts of the book that talked about Charles Manson being a member. However, your boy has got a copy of the original chapter intact. (laughs) 
And I'm going to read it for you. All right. And I quote. And again, these are allegations that apparently, uh, allegedly, weren't true on some level. I'm just re- I'm just telling you what it said. It says the black caped, black garbed, death worshiping process church of the final judgment arrived on the Los Angeles scene in early 1968. They stayed in public view till a few days after Robert Kennedy's assassination in June of 68, after which they dropped from sight in Los Angeles. And for what purpose were these noble Englishmen journeying to the United States? Gore and world end. There's that world end we're talking about, right? The eschatology. The eschaton. If you fast forward later on in the book, it says the process church of the final judgment is an English occult society dedicated to observing and aiding the end of the world by stirring up murder, violence, and chaos and dedicated to the proposition that they, the process, shall survive the gore as the chosen people. Sound like Manson? And then it goes on to describe how the process church was into the ideas of Christ and Lucifer added Satan to the list of gods when they spent time learning about alleged human sacrifice in Mexico. Allegedly they did this. Because the human sacrifice angle is seems to be the center of focus oftentimes when you get into this stuff. Now, the Process Church was started by Marianne and Robert de Grimston. And Marianne de Grimston, fun fact, was previously engaged to Sugar Ray Robinson. And the Process Church, they talked about this unification of Christ and Satan, which is exactly what Ezra Miller claims Ezra is. And they explain it as... Look, they were enemies, but through love they forgave each other and unified. And the end times are going to be these two on the uh, the, ta- the WWF tag team here, where God's the judge and Satan is the executor. Now, of course, we're also looking at the idea of opposing polarities coming together, which, again, the Baphomet, the goat with the bobs, represents. So when Ezra Miller shows artwork of him as the Baphomet and then he says I'm Jesus and the devil kind of leads you down this path or so I say right now Carl Jung famous psychoanalyst and Gnostic he said that the holy trinity of the Christian faith is misrepresented and he and he says Look, we've got God the Father, we've got God the Son, and we've got the Holy Spirit, but there's a missing fourth element, which is the dark side, where God is the devil. You know, God created all things, so he created the devil. And the process church, now they would end up splintering at some point, I think in the 70s or 80s, and most of them ended up in Utah at, and starting the animal sanctuary called Best Friends Animal Sanctuary. Okay? But now don't start now, don't start protesting Best Friends. They, they they all they do is rescue animals now. In fact, they saved those pit bulls that Michael Vick was abusing. And hell, I'm even I'm even thinking about driving down there to get a parrot. So but one thing you'll find with the occultist and this is where we find common ground with some of these occultists. They're very much into the protection of animals and the environment. Like Charles Manson, right? Charles Manson started Atwa, air, trees, water, animals. So all this is going on, right? And this and this Vanity Fair article goes to this this whole spiral timeline. And the guy's been busy. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? He, uh, like I said, he, he had choked out a woman in Iceland, but here's what's interesting. I'm going to read you from that part. 
It says, while in Iceland, Miller was accompanied by Jasper Young Bear, a 55-year-old North Dakota medicine man the actor had hired as a spiritual advisor. Young Bear seems to have stoked Miller's outsize vision of himself. Jasper was telling Ezra that he wasn't a part of the movement. He was the movement. That he was the next Messiah and that the Freemasons were sending demons out to kill him. The Freemasons are sending demons out to kill him because he's the next Messiah. Now, you can't, you can't ignore the connections here that Ezra Miller has to these big groups, these big secret society type groups. And then you find out at his farm, at his compound, we'll say, he's got an altar there. So there's a religious element here, a spiritual element. It says the house in Vermont contains an altar that's home to bullets, weeds, sage, and flash figurines, according to two people who visited this year. A lot of times he makes the women put their cell phones on the altar when they come in and other offerings. Ezra freaked out recently, demanding that Susan Sarandon come pay tribute to his altar because he did, she didn't invite Ezra to a dinner party. Miller's rep says that Sarandon and Miller are dear friends. Now, if you recall, Susan Sarandon was into some really odd stuff, too. Like putting Timothy Leary's cremains in a Burning Man sacrificial altar. We covered that several years ago. What are the offerings? That's the question I have. Is it is it nails and teeth? And if it, that's the case, that's sympathetic magic. It's what he could be using it. Now let's go one more thing, and then we're gonna then we're gonna do a sort of wrap up in conclusion to put a bow around this because there's a lot of different things going on here, right? Well, back in 2018, Miller came out as non-binary and polyamorous. Says in 2018, Miller came out as non-binary and polyamorous, telling Playboy about the free love environment they created for themselves, calling it a polycule, a portmanteau of polyamorous and molecule. According to three people in Miller's circle, the polycule is less a democratic society than an ever-shifting court harem of mostly young women. A friend of the actor says, an openly polyamorous lifestyle, that's not inherently wrong to me. But Miller's situation, in their opinion, is actually a patriarchal dictatorship where Ezra controls all the sex as the man and plays the women against each other, screams at them, belittle, belittles them in front of the others. Sounds very mind control-esque. Sounds very much like Manson family stuff, like, like all the cult leaders. You know, because Manson had young women too. Angela Lansbury, who just died, her daughter Dee Dee, she was like 15. She was rolling around with the family, using her mom's credit cards to fund a lot of, a lot of their antics. The what's that dude? Andrew Tate used this very similar practices. From his own words, I've seen the videos of him talking about it. So let's wrap it all up, right? Because there's a lot, lot going on here. We know that he's into some occult practices. And this goes back to before all these big problems of recently. And if you read about his time at this 95-acre farm in Vermont, it says, Since 2017, Miller has lived on the farm in Vermont, which they christened The Mountain. The property, which is surrounded by dense woods, used to be an alpaca and llama farm, features apple and blueberry orchards, three barns, and a modest blue-roofed house. Goats roam the premises. The house was kind of a mess, but the friends crashing didn't care. They shot arrows and went for hikes. Miller smoked marijuana, performed chaos magic, and played Call of Duty, <coughs> and so on and so on. So the chaos magic that he was performing, the ritual magic of, of chaos magic, which kind of says you would, you'll use 
any sort of uh, character, any sort of archetype to make the magic work for you? Was he opening up doorways doing this chaos magic? He had a shaman with him at the time, if you recall. All right. And if he's opening up doorways, who is it for? Well, it's for the end times. All right. He's trying to bring about the apocalypse, which is part of the process church of the final judgment. I'm going to read you some more. It says, Ezra is Jesus, and Takata's an apocalyptic Native American spider goddess, and their union is supposed to bring about the apocalypse, recaps one person. And that's the real reason everyone is so opposed to them being together. Iron Eyes' mother, Jumping Eagle, has heard Miller's story too. They say they are some kind of messiah, and they're going to lead an indigenous revolution. So again, the process to the final judgment is about unifying Christ and Satan, and that's what Ezra Miller claims that Ezra Miller is. And that's what's being accomplished. And what about the grooming? Why is why is everyone okay with him grooming all these kids? Allegedly, right? They these Hollywood types they can't help themselves. They just love it. They they you know, they have all these noble causes, but then you see all this stuff with the kids happening all over the place. In fact, I watched Licorice Pizza, which is about a 15-year-old boy falling in love with a 25-year-old woman. That's what the story's about in 2022. And people love the movie. Oh, the greatest movie. Oh, all these awards. First off, it wasn't that great of a movie, I didn't think. But it's a weird story. Why? You couldn't have just made it an 18-year-old guy? And by the way, they casted a big-ass 15-year-old boy because they knew it was going to look weird. But you ever seen a 15-year-old boy? looks like a little kid. Yeah, Hollywood's the worst, right? Well, not too long ago, reports were in that Ezra Miller is, in fact going to play the Flash in these DC Universe films. And guess who's the director? James Gunn. All right. And if you recall, back in 2018, Disney, of all people, actually fired James Gunn from the Marvel Universe. Why did they do that? Because he was tweeting jokes about rape and pedophilia. Jokes like... I like when little boys touch me in my silly place. Not funny. Jokes like, the best thing about being raped is when you're done being raped and it's like, whew, this feels great not being raped. (laughs) And look, I'm not a, look, I don't agree with cancel culture. I think you should give them a path to redemption. But the bigger question is, why did he think that was funny in the first place? Like, I don't think you should you should cancel people because of weird tweets, but you should cancel them if they're really doing this stuff. That's a problem. Like, I don't think those are funny jokes. I think they're in poor taste. I think they're gross. But the real question to me is, what's actually going on? Because there's a reason he thinks those jokes are on some level appropriate to share. And, you know, the people that support cancel culture say, well, the problem is these jokes open up an environment to accept that these things are happening. So, I don't know. But what's going on with Ezra Miller, right? Mental health issues, for sure, right? That's definitely a consideration. But what triggered these issues? Uh, The article suggests that it was his parents' divorce, But then later, it alludes to the idea that maybe Hollywood is behind it. Uh Uh-huh. Kaylin says that Miller expressed that they had experienced a lot of trauma and weird shit in the Hollywood scene. And we were like, hell yeah, we'll help you out. Speaking to Playboy in 2018, Miller said, I've survived abuse for sure, 
in a lot of capacities starting from a pretty young age. I think he's got a story to tell. But I think his mind has been warped by all this occult practices. And, you know, he says he's got an altar for, I would argue, probably for sympathetic magic. He's doing chaos magic. He thinks he's Jesus and the devil. So he's for sure doing a lot of these occult things, which makes me wonder if that's not why he gets the pass. Why is he getting a pass? How is the Flash not getting canceled at this point? They've canceled all kinds of other stuff. For less, right? Maybe it's because of his positioning. They set him up to be the the icon of the non-binary community. And they don't want to, I don't know, feel like they're attacking the community, maybe. The Vanity Fair article gives examples of how Miller seems to be actually using that label to try to portray himself as a victim, even though he's acting like a total jerk. And where the lines for me get blurry is that in the conspiracy community, there's always this Christian conservative tilt that I don't always agree with. And back in the day, lots of people were pointing out how Miller was becoming a non-binary person and therefore he's now satanic, which to me is not an argument that holds up, right? Like just because you're pushing the non-binary thing, that doesn't automatically equate to Satanism. Now you're doing chaos magic and you say you're the devil. Okay, that's a different story. And I've read in forums that claim, this goes back to the Bible, this non-binary thing. They claim that there's a thing called the, the legion of demons. And they said, we are many. So a lot of people will point to that idea that non-binary means multiple spirits in one body. And that goes back to legion, a non-binary demonic spirit. Now, one damning argument I read was Ezra Miller's own statements from a GQ interview. And the cover of that particular GQ magazine shows him covering up one eye. Again, the all-seeing eye. The idea of being enlightened into the waves of the dark arts and the occult. Miller says, We're not fighting for equality. None of these conflicts against systems of oppression are fights for equality. They are fights for accurate regard of supremacy. We're better at sex than y'all. We're better at art. We're better at warfare. These are things carried in the old understandings of so-called whatever you want to call it. Non-binary, queer, genderqueer, trans, gay, lesbian. Just like the neurodiverse peoples, these people are all sacred beings superior to other beings. And Miller also says in that interview, their view of the definition of trans. Miller says, in Hawaii, there is a word, mahu, which almost translates as that which is becoming, like an idol not quite formed. In Hawaiian native understanding, everyone has ku, male spirit, and hina, female spirit. Everyone is trans. And I think that's true to some level, right? We all have... Like the yin and yang, we all have male and female polarities within us, and it's kind of different upon as to how much of each we, we have, right? Now, I'm not sure what to make of any of this, but I do know what seems pretty clear to me is that Ezra Miller has been dabbling in magical occult realms. We've tied it into Aleister Crowley, the Baphomet, Chaos Magic, the Process Church, even just plain old-fashioned Christ and Satan. And I wouldn't count out any of that stuff being something that he really believes and subscribes to, right? And there's all, But then there's the rational argument. He's probably got a lot of mental issues going on there. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully the guy can get the help he needs to snap out of it, right? But I, think, I find it really intriguing that given this long rap sheet... A, he's still able to maintain a job as an actor, but B, Hollywood's not even considering canceling him. It's very odd. It's a very odd story. 
But there you go. That's uh, <laughs> that's unpacking a little bit on this Ezra Miller guy. Uh, check out my Instagram for some of these images I'm talking about. It's very strange. Uh, surely more will come of this. I got my eye on the guy. So uh, thank you for listening to the show. And until next time, stay woke. Thank you.